you want to move to a Scottish island. I have lived on Sky now for 10 years. For anyone who doesn't know, which will be most people south of the border, hi. Um, Sky is an island, very small island, off the northwest coast of Scotland. We're joined to the mainland by a bridge, which is super, super important, and I feel the need to tell the internet that because if I see one more company charging 50 quid delivery because they don't think there's a bridge and they think they have to get on a ferry, I'm going to lose my mind. To celebrate 10 years of living on a remote Scottish island in the middle of nowhere, I would like to share with you some truths about living on a remote Scottish island in the middle of nowhere. Before I get started, please hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this video and hit the ring bell button. I feel the need to do the finger guns every time I say that because it's not how I actually say it, but if you've been here since the start, then you know. So you wanna live on a Scottish island. The first thing you need to be aware of is that nothing, nothing is 24 hours for your convenience. There is no 2 a.m. drunken wandering around Tesco. By the way, there's no Tesco here at the moment. So many people come up here on holiday and complained. When I was working in the tourist industry, so many tourists would complain about the lack of 24 hour convenience things. It's a rural island in the Highlands of Scotland. What did you expect? If you want 24 hour convenience, stay in the city. That's what it's for. We don't have that here, and that is the end of that. The next thing you need to know is that every single year, every single year, winter lasts for approximately 10 months. That's it, winter is really long, and it's, and it's really dark, and it's miserable, and we're so far north that you can literally have days at the shortest time of the year where it feels like it's only been daylight for about four hours and that may not be strictly accurate, but that's just how it feels. Winter lasts an incredibly long time. If you are not a cold weather person, do not move to the Northern Highlands. You are making a mistake, you don't wanna be here. But don't move here just because you've seen one photo of it on Instagram looking really pretty in the middle of the summer. Kinda hand in hand with the fact that winter lasts so long is the simple fact that the winters are incredibly harsh. There was one year, incidentally, the year after I moved into the caravan where I had to go and stay with my mum because there were 100 mile an hour winds forecast, but it wasn't classed as a hurricane or a tornado. That's just what we get. And you know what? That caravan of mine hardly moved an inch. It did move, it moved a few inches. I'm not gonna lie, it did move a few inches, but it didn't blow into a field or the ocean or a road. It didn't knock unsuspecting passers-by over into oncoming traffic or something. Like, the roof didn't peel off like fruit skin, you know? Um, but it did move. So the winters are really, really harsh. We are talking a huge amount, a huge amount of storm after storm after storm of 60 mile an hour winds plus. The 100 mile an hour winter was, was a bit of a one-off, but it's been nearly that since then. It's pretty wild. You are talking regular power cuts. You are talking regular frozen pipes. You are talking lots of black ice. Occasionally there's a big bit of snow. That's very, very rare though. I feel like it's just too wild for snow. Snow is like, nah, I'm not doing that. And it is absolutely crazy and it lasts for months and months and months on end and it's dark and it's miserable. And that first spring day where you feel some warmth from the sun makes you emotional when you feel the warmth of the sun after so many months of just miserable, grey, everything. The next fun fact is that most places deliver here, but there's a lot that don't. 
get used to that and it doesn't matter how many times you email them saying hey there's a toll free bridge just stick it on a lorry doesn't work mostly it's places that sell big things like furniture so if you need furniture you better find somewhere that delivers because there are quite a few places that won't and there are quite a few places that will try and charge you through the ass for the extra delivery because they think you're cut off from the mainland. One of the big things that I see time and time again in the 10 years that I've lived here is that a lot of people move here at the tail end of the winter or maybe in the autumn and if they survive their first winter they think they're set and then the tourists come. Ah lovely lovely tourism we love tourism for the simple fact that it is the largest proportion of income that the area has but also we hate tourism because of the tourists obviously the population increases massively from easter until about october the population i think pretty much triples on the island or in the area in general uh, that means there is triple the amount of traffic, triple the amount of people in the supermarkets, triple the amount of people trying to do the few touristy destinations that everyone wants to do, and triple the amount of people uh, doing stupid things. Things like climbing a mountain in flip-flops and then breaking your ankle and wondering why. Things like pulling up on the side of blind corners to take a picture of a mountain that also exists on the straight 50 feet in front of you. Things like being bullied on the road because you're driving at 15 miles an hour and people have jobs to get to. You don't have to stop in the middle of the road or on a blind bend or on a hill to do that. You could, you could just wait until one of the many parking spaces alongside the road becomes free because they're literally right there. Like you just have to you just have to drive a bit further and there will be somewhere that you can safely pull in that isn't gonna get anyone killed. The other big thing about moving to a remote Scottish island is that you cannot, and please don't, bring your city mentality here. A lot of people move here and think that they can come in and change the way things have always been done. And that's just not how it works. You, you can't come here and expect to change it and make it like Little England. That's not how it works. This is a completely different speed of life. Nothing gets done immediately. There is a philosophy called sky time. Sky time, and we love sky time, because sky time is quite simply something that could get done in less than 24 hours in England will take six weeks here. That's just the way it is, and it's fabulous. I love it. The pace of life here, the lack of stress, the lack of anything remotely keeping up with the Joneses is amazing. It is completely chill, completely relaxed, and if you move here and try and live with the same level of rat race mentality that you had living elsewhere, you are not going to enjoy it and it's gonna really stress you out. I'm gonna leave this one here for today, guys. I can't believe I've lived here for 10 years. It has been the best decade of my life absolutely love living on sky wouldn't live anywhere else but it's also not for everyone and i am very aware of that if you want to see more of our adventures here on sky including upcoming house stuff house renovations super exciting then please hit subscribe down below and hit that ring bell button and get notified every time i post a new video and we will see you in the next one. I don't know why I'm using the royal we. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!